David Wong, in 1966, designed and constructed another transistor-based computer at the University of Sydney called Arcturus. It was designed with the full knowledge of both ADA and SNOCOM circuit designs to create a computer with very high-speed logical circuits. However, it had a very restricted budget, necessitating the salvaging of many diodes and transistors from older equipment. With the help of Kevin Roslin, Arcturus employed a high-speed carry look-ahead adder. Arcturus could perform unconditional transfer of control and jump to subroutine instructions. Programs for Arcturus were written in binary until the assembly language APL was created, which made it possible to compile efficient machine code. By December 1966, Arcturus had the fastest computer arithmetic units constructed in Australia. Arcturus was connected to a RAMAC disk unit via an interface which included direct memory access and vectored interrupts, features which would later become common in commercial computers. Arcturus was a much, much faster machine. It was parallel, 20-bit, and used circuits which I developed that were many times faster than the original Snowcom circuits and it could do a 20-bit a parallel addition in something like 125 nanoseconds, which for those times was quite fast. It's about 1961, uh, I started to develop a new set of circuits which were much faster than the ones that were used in Snowcom. The logic, I remember developing a technique where you could do and or a middle follower and or a middle follower and the total delay in that chain was 11 nanoseconds which in about 19, the 1960s was fairly fast. Arcturus was built with very limited resources. The amount of funding we got each year was certainly not enough to buy all the components that were necessary. In 1963, we were developing circuits for the basic logic and the registers and debating whether it would be a serial machine or a parallel machine. I do remember those debates. The serial machines take a lot less components. Parallel machines take a lot of components. And uh, when we were restricted for finance, serial machine had an attraction, but speed was the overriding factor and so it had to be a parallel computer. The whole aim was to get the fastest possible machine we could build. Speed was everything in those days. Snowcom was a great machine for its time, but terribly slow. None of the Snowcom modules went into Arcturus because the speeds were gradually improving and the transistors were getting better. We were constantly searching data sheets for transistors that were faster or more reliable. And of course, gradually it went from germanium to silicon transistors because they were uh, more stable. We used a lot of the transistors that were not used in earlier machines were recoded and unfortunately some of the, the gains had dropped so we had to retest every component and again code it so that the flip-flops etc were, were matched two sides because the transistors that were needed were ones that we could only buy from, from Philco in the United States. Surprisingly, OA90 point contact diodes are very fast in their switching. That was what we used. They're a sub-miniature diode and uh, using those and the surface barrier transistors, we were able to get quite high speeds. Of us would have been the fastest. It was possible to accumulate an ad, actually form the, the sum ready to, ready to strobe into a register in about 125 nanoseconds, an eighth of a microsecond. Once you had to accumulate into a register, it would take longer. The accumulation process, I think, I think it was half a microsecond for that to take place. Ferrite core memory was the obviously better than a drum, much faster than a drum. Core memory was used in Arcturus. I remember one year in building Arcturus, I think our major purpose for that year was the core stack, and that was about the limit of the funds for that year, which I think was a thousand words of 20-bit size. We used to drive that core, we used load-sharing matrix switches, and those switches were actually developed by the group that was building Cirrus in Adelaide, and we bought some of those same switches. 
core memory, it's non-volatile except that to read it, you have to destroy it. That's the only way to read a core, is to destroy that. And so the read-write cycle time used to be six microseconds, but I developed a set of circuits, transistor circuits, to drive those switches and was able to find a technique and driving those switches and in in the receiving circuits to receive the very small signal you get when a core changes state. I was able to build circuits which had a thousand common mode rejection ratio and I could get the cycle time of the memory down from six microseconds to 1.3 microseconds. Well, of course, that improved the speed of the machine by at least four times, just in that fact alone. And that was, that was a big factor in getting the speed we needed. Part of the design of Arcturus was in the in the uh, high-speed arithmetic control unit, arithmetic unit. David Wong worked on the uh, carry look-ahead adder, and uh, that Im significantly improves addition where there could be a ripple carry. Some of additions will ripple a bit along the whole register, and that takes quite a long while to do it. But carry look-ahead logic actually anticipates by the state of the two numbers being added what will be the carry into that bit. And so you can predict the carries and stop it rippling the whole length of the machine, whole length of the register, I should say. And it improved the speed of the addition and that significantly improves the other operations as well. There is a way you can predict whether there will be a carry from two, two bits. If there's, if there's two ones that are being added, obviously there will be a carry. Uh, if there's a 1 and a 0, there may be a carry depending upon the propagation from the previous bit. If it's a 0 and a 0, there will not be a carry. There can't be, even as a propagation from the previous bit. And so you have logic that looks at those possibilities and then predicts what will be the, the, the result, the final result. And uh, so it saves a lot of time by predicting that you don't have to ripple a carry bit right along the whole register. Yes, Arcturus was, was finished finally in early 1966 and tested and it was used for a number of programming jobs but when a machine is a research project it's not stable because the new ideas have to be incorporated just to satisfy the designers and the builders. We have a better idea than we had last week and because of that it wasn't stable enough to use reliably for production work. The programmers get frustrated when a program that worked last week doesn't work this week because you've changed the order code a bit. Arcturus was a long time building partly because finance was a limiting factor. We couldn't buy the things that we needed. I seem to remember we had to buy a higher speed oscilloscope too because the higher speed circuitry needed, needed that. Just time, there were really only two people involved in Arcturus. That was David Wong and I. We were limited in how much we could do and uh, a lot of problems to be solved along the way. I really love working with David. He was a great fellow to, to work with, always very cooperative and helpful, always very respectful in everything that he did. It was a real experience and it, that was a real motivation to do better, to get the project functioning and, and working well. We finished up producing a machine that was actually a very fast machine for its day.